I want to talk about uh, certainly another thing, uh, give you a chance to clarify the Green New Deal. Yeah. Um, uh, one of the things we're even um, hearing the president say is that uh, you would outlaw uh, cows. Oh, yeah. Uh, cows farting, that would be out. Uh, yeah. Children, hamburgers, ice cream. Uh, any of that uh, true at all? No, in fact, um, I, think it, I think it is interesting. It's always good to see how, how these narratives are manipulated because uh, they're trying to say that the Green New Deal is about what we have to give up, what we have to cut back on, when in fact uh, the Green New Deal itself is a resolution to be more expansive. It is to be able to generate more and to make sure that we're investing in working class, uh, in working class Americans so that we all can afford to have more in life so that an affordable apartment isn't a dream but a norm and that health care is a right, not a privilege. Um, and, and honestly, the only reason I think anyone would have to cut back on ice cream is if their doctor advised them to. But. Yeah, and that sometimes doctors <laughs> will do that. Um, there is also, it should be pointed out, though, there are some Democrats who seem a little cautious of uh, how ambitious the Green New Deal is. How do you talk to your uh, colleagues within your own party to let them know that this is the right path to take? And yeah. have you met with a lot of inter-party resistance? Yeah, I, well, I think one of the things that's important that, that doesn't get communicated is that our Green New Deal legislation is not a bill. It's a resolution. So there's two different kinds of legislation. And what a resolution does is that if we pass the resolution in the House, it doesn't go into the Senate and it doesn't go to the president. It is a House resolution. It is a declaration. It is an intentional vision uh, document. And what it does is that it puts uh, forward the large scope, the overall vision of what we're trying to accomplish, and to say, listen, if we're going to make progress, we need to declare our North Star, and our North Star is 100% renewable energy, it's Medicare for all, it's tuition-free public colleges, it's investing in technology and, and renewable, uh, renew, renewable resources and electric vehicles. And, um, and as a result, the, any legislation, any actual bills that do follow from that are pieces of that. So um, you can have one bill that just addresses, uh, you know, battery battery storage, like uh, like Representative Takano out in California. You can have bills that repre that uh, just address infrastructure investment, and so. All of those are pieces, but the resolution, the Green New De uh, Deal, is the vision of what we need to accomplish in the next 10 years. It's really exciting, and I hope people actually look at what it says. Mm -hmm. I, what, another thing that I think everyone uh, is appreciating about this uh, new generation of people that are in Congress is it strikes me that people show up in Congress and then people who've been there longer said, to them, hey, this is how it works here. And it seems like a lot of you are now doing us the service of turning to us and going, like, you guys won't believe how it works here. Yeah. And telling us as opposed to just accepting these rules. Uh, you posted this photo, um, which was fascinating to me. Um, explain what's going on here real quick. So I was, I was shocked at this photo. What this photo represents are uh, folks who are experiencing homelessness that have been paid by lobbyists to wait outside of committee rooms so that lobbyists can be the first and oftentimes only seats in a congressional hearing. They're basically holding a place in line. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And when you saw that this has been happening for a very long time, and I certainly had never heard of it, and uh, I appreciate you putting it out on uh, social media because I think it's a helpful thing for us to know exactly what's going on in this hall of this building yeah, that we're yeah. all uh, chipping in and for. And it's not to say that, that these folks sitting down are doing anything wrong, but... You know, congressional hearings are not a Beyonce concert. You know, yeah. they're two different things. And this is one way in which money and politics has really sunk so steep to the fact that everyday people can't even see their own elected officials because a lobbyist has paid to get in there first. Uh, I want to uh, point out one more thing uh, on the Green Deal before we go, because uh, uh, the president said uh, it was uh, like a bad uh, report. He yeah. said it was a poorly <laughs> written. He did not buy the science in it. Uh, but it's very unfair to say that about you. You, uh, you were a winner of science <laughs> awards. Look at that. I... The... 
I mean, I never, <laughs> personally, never went past like the paper mache volcano that my dad definitely made and not made. <laughs> but this was a uh, uh, this was a passion of yours when uh, when you were in, in high school, right? Yeah, yeah. Science was my first passion, and I pursued uh, the Intel Science Competition. I studied microbiology and the impacts of antioxidants on a model organism known as a C. elegans, which uh. is an, of the nematode family. I think uh, that's something you have in common with the president, because I think he did that too. Because he's I, a yeah. nematode, or? <laughs> no, no, no. He's an anti-toxin. Uh, <laughs> uh, thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate it.